Okay, so if we come back to our little map here, um, it's pretty straightforward. The consumption approach to poverty is a single indicator approach. It only wants to look at consumption, um, what people are actually spending. When it comes to the question of thresholds, um, we don't really know. Um, there has not really been a consumption poverty threshold that has been proposed or has gained widespread acceptance. We do know, however, that if Meyer and Sullivan or any other advocates of a consumption approach to poverty were to propose a threshold, it would probably be absolute um, because they have expressed a strong preference for measuring progress over time against an absolute threshold, not a floating threshold, but one that is anchored. So, the definition of poverty that is inherent in this approach is basically having consumption that falls below some absolute threshold. Um, and some have argued that this threshold would almost necessarily have to be linked to the concept of subsistence, um, physical subsistence. Take, for example, the World Bank's global extreme poverty line. Um, this is the one you often probably hear about in the news. Um, several years ago, they had set the global extreme poverty line at about a dollar a day. And then along about um, a decade ago, they switched it to a dollar 25 a day. And now it's basically up to a dollar 90 a day. And this is in purchasing power parity. You see this abbreviation PPP an awful lot in poverty studies um, research. And all that means is that they are controlling for the purchasing power of different kinds of currencies. So um, a person who is able to consume less than $1.90 a day in the currency of their country, what what a dollar ninety a day could buy in their country is below the global extreme poverty line. So that's about six hundred and ninety-three dollars and fifty cents per person per year. And the World Bank devised this line by looking at the line below which a person's minimum nutritional clothing and shelter needs cannot be met. And a lot of people don't know this. They think that the dollar ninety a day is refers to income, but it doesn't. It refers to consumption, people who are consuming less than that line. And even though they've updated it, they do then um, backdate. Each time they've redrawn the line, they backdate. So, um, and this allows us to see um, the progress on poverty. So using their current line, $1.90 a day, um, in 1990, global extreme poverty was 35%. It's now down to 10.7%. Uh, 1.8 billion people um, were beneath that line in 1990, and now 767 people. Uh, well, in 2013, 767 million people were. Um, that's significant progress, and without a kind of absolute line, um, we would not necessarily be able to see that progress. And that's something that the consumption approach really values. You might think that this line is irrelevant for developed countries, um, that basically the global extreme poverty rate in countries like the United States or European countries is basically zero. Um, most serious economists agree that that is true. There has been a recent book, it came out last year, um, that has gotten a lot of attention. Um, a book by Catherine Eden and Luke Schaefer called $2 a Day Living on Almost Nothing in America. And these are sociologists, and they went out and they interviewed people um, who have less than $2 a day of cash income. And these two researchers um, conclude that there are about a, a million and a half households who actually have cash available to them that totals less than $2 per person per year. That's about $730 per person per year. And a lot of these are people who are experiencing homelessness, people who are experiencing um, very serious deprivation. The primary sources of that very low income, $730 a year, tend to be things like selling your plasma, um, redeeming bottles and cans. But it's important to note that even though this book re received a lot of attention, Eden and Schaefer are not asserting that these households are consuming less than $2 a day. Um, some of these families are living in 
um, public housing. So they're consuming housing, but they're not necessarily paying for housing with income, but they're consuming that housing. Um, SNAP, if you have SNAP dollars, um, they would be consuming food even though they wouldn't have cash income. So there, there is in many of the families that they study the presence of some non-cash resources. If you're interested in reading profiles of some of the people in the United States um, who have cash income of less than $2 a day, they have a great little blog here and you can feel free to go over there and check it out. So just to summarize, the consumption approach to poverty is a single indicator approach, and it's an approach that's more theoretical. It asserts that what people are actually consuming is a better indicator of their level of advantage or disadvantage than their income. And the consumption approach is not yet at least a measure of poverty within the United States. The World Bank's global extreme poverty line is um, a measure of, of global poverty, um, but there's, and the reason it's not yet a measure of poverty is because there really isn't any consensus on what an appropriate threshold would be. But we do know that the approach as a whole values absoluteness in um, assessing progress over time in poverty reduction. <laughs>